the wildlife of the coast of southwest Pembrokeshire. The picture here is of Marlowe's Beach, the half island of Gateholm, and the island of Skokholm on the horizon. Uh, Skokholm Bird Observatory was reopened after the war in 1946 and I was asked to be honorary warden for that season. Well imagine yourself now arriving at Skokholm, approaching the southeast side of the island which is the normal landing place, leaving the yacht in deep water. Uh, you come ashore here to the landing steps made of concrete here in South Haven. And the skipper here is also, uh, that is uh, Sid Thomas, was also a member of the fish guard uh, lifeboat. And almost the first bird you will notice is a great black back gull. There are 50 pairs of these on the island. They are scavengers and they will rob the nests of the eggs and young of many other species. And then there are herring gulls and watch the clever way they balance in the air, resting on up currents of wind up the cliffs carefully adjusting wing and tail feathers and sometimes chasing each other about. But like the greater blackbacks, they are also uh, scavengers and will rob other birds if they can drive away the rightful owners of the nests. Like this nest, for instance, of a carrion crow. One chick has just hatched out. Uh, that could be a meal for a gull and they will eat eggs and young. So wherever you walk around the island, these gulls will be constantly on patrol, so to speak, along the cliffs. And very rugged cliffs they are too. This is the west side of the island. And on most days a heavy sea is running, the waves reaching almost to the cliff tops. The herring gulls approach the island in March. They settle down here for the summer and make a nest on the cliffs and rear three young. Near the top of the picture, in a moment, you will see a ledge of uh, guillemots and uh, it is up there, at the top there, and the waves just miss these ledges. The birds seem to know exactly where it is safe for them to lay uh, in the case of Killimot and Razorbill, only one egg. And the ledge may only be only a, a foot or two wide, and often less than that. Uh, just up here, uh, you can look down on that ledge uh, in a moment, and a, a Killimot a, an ocean seabird is on the right here and the, in a moment the egg uh, is in the shadow of the right hand bird. It is pear shaped so that if it's uh, disturbed it cannot possibly roll off uh, straight down into the sea. And then of course there are puffins and you may not know that uh, Puffin likes to look at you with one eye and then with the other eye and then with the first one and so on uh, rather uh, than with both eyes uh, at, at once. Then the razor bills which are blacker than guillemot and and more sensible in their nesting uh, place choice for they like to lay again the single egg uh, and rear the chick underneath these boulders and rocks on the cliff slopes out of the way of those uh, scavenging gulls. There's one in the background now. 
but they have razor bills a conspicuous white line running from the eye right across the tip of the bill and distinguishing them easily from guillemots. Well, the wing is short and used for swimming uh, underwater and steering and of course uh, the feet are, are webbed and there are a few hundred pairs nesting all along these cliffs. But while you are wandering about uh, watching everything on the west side, this is uh, taking the full force of the Atlantic here, uh, look out not only for sea birds but also for sea flowers and these sea pink, uh, you'll see them in color a bit later on, uh, there are clumps of sea pink or thrift, a very hardy plant uh, all along the coastline and down below in only in very sheltered places you will find a rich growth of seaweed because the tides are too strong for them uh, in much of the island. Then go up to the freshwater pond on the top of the island. And here you may find small wading birds such as these dunlin on migration. They are on their way to the Yorkshire moors or to Scotland to nest and are feeding in an inch or two of shallow water at the edge of the pond. Now this is early May and they are in the full summer breeding dress. In the winter they lose that black patch uh, below and become much whiter and they pause on their journey to rest and feed and are remarkably tame. When you are walking round the pond up on this open plateau you may come across a flock of wild sheep. These are Sowy sheep from the little island of Sowy off St Kilda in Scotland and were presented to Skokum in 1935. But they are still very wild and it's difficult to get near them. They are very sensitive to human uh, disturbance and this one was abandoned by its parents after someone had touched it in the, in the bracken. Uh, because the parents became immediately suspicious and, and just deserted it and so we had to bring it up. And this is our helper George Harris, commonly known as the Baron, because he was very good at uh, t telling tall stories. And here uh, he is in charge of this Sowie lamb and the Baron took it upon himself to, uh, to look after it. He became actually a delightful pet, this, this one, and he never returned uh, to the wild flock of his birth, as he much preferred uh, to stay with us. There are also, it, it is rather a, a goat-like animal, the Sowie, and in fact um, there, there are goats still on the island. The Lockleys had them before the war for milk, uh, pretty strong stuff it was, I, I remember and you may come across some of the goats uh, or their descendants um, very agile indeed all over the cliffs. And now we go round to the North Haven uh, and here are some of the observers uh, setting out to visit a buzzard's nest uh, sent uh, down below and we kept away from this nest for a long time to make sure that the young hatched out uh, safely without any disturbance and when we got there we found two uh, well-grown young well feathered and they were fed uh, mainly on rabbits uh, one was uh, slightly larger than the other and the buzzards kept uh, mainly to the north end of the island the northern half while the pair of ravens, this uh, nest in the middle here, kept to the southern half of the island and there are in fact five young ravens in this nest. They're all huddled together and getting rather hot with their beaks wide open. There are no trees whatever on the island and the nest is on the cliff about uh, 80 feet uh, directly over the sea near the lighthouse at the southern end of the island. 
And near the top, there's one of the observers here in the picture climbing down uh, on a rope, and he's got some rings in his pocket. And you will see how he puts them on the leg.